Hey everybody, this is Darren Dunlop with the Fargo-Moorhead West Fargo Chamber of Commerce. I am so honored today to be joined by Dr. Carla Wolford from Elevate Human Potential. Uh, Carla, thanks so much for joining me today. You're welcome. You know, uh, Carla, I, 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 we've had the good fortune of uh, seeing you at some of our Women Connect events and uh, our uh, business training events. Um, and I've never had the opportunity to ask you this, but I'm interested in finding out how you came to the name Elevate Human Potential. Well, Darren, uh, there's a famous John Wooden quote that uh, was basically all about learning and striving to be better than yesterday. And so I've kind of taken that as my kind of motto and through everything that I've done as far as the clinic and the gym and the sports performances, I want to be able to help everyone elevate their own true human potential. And I think I can sometimes see the potential that people can't even see in themselves. And so that's where EHP and Elevate Human Potential came from. So Elevate Human Potential is really the name of your chiropractic service. Um, but then um, EHP Sports Performance really is your gym side. So I guess a question I would have, uh, you know, which came first? You know, it's a chicken or egg thing. Which came first or did they, they come together? How, how, did the, how did you come to the idea of having both companies? Well, that's a mixed bag. Uh, I, I can probably flip a coin and say which one was in my thought process before the other. But uh, I played college sports at Concordia. And so the fitness aspect and the performance aspect was always, uh, I was just always very curious about that. Um, after I graduated from Concordia, I went to grad school to um, basically do a doctorate of chiropractic. And in the meantime, I kind of overlapped a master's in sports science and rehabilitation with that. And so I got the clinical aspect of it through uh, my doctorate of chiropractic. And then I sort of went into the physical training component with my master's. So I finished my doctorate right before I finished my master's, which I know was backwards. Uh, but I, I was really curious in my master's thesis was how do we bridge rehab to performance? And I think there's a lot of great rehab out there, but it, it's not asking patients the question of like, hey, what are your goals and what are your expectations? And then I need to help bring you there. So I feel like I need to have that clinical knowledge and then the, the also the knowledge to bridge people from where they're at and where they want to go to. And so um, they kind of go hand in hand and they kind of inner work back and forth together. And some people I see in the clinic, it's way more clinical um, as far as what you would probably think of clinical. And some people I see in the clinic, it's way more performance based. Um, and but when I ended up moving back to the Fargo Moorhead area almost six years ago now, I had kind of decided that there wasn't something already here for what I had envisioned. Like I couldn't just go apply for a job somewhere. I had to create it. And so that's where the clinic and the performance, which we have a bunch of things under EHP. So EHP is a CrossFit. We offer classes that are called Elevate. We go into local high schools, do all their strength and conditioning. We offer teens programs, kids programs, adaptive programs. And so it's really all about elevating true human potential kind of from many aspects. Of well, thank you, Co thank you, Coach Wooden, for, uh, for, for the inspiration <laughs> behind that. Well, Carla, uh, you know, it, I found it very interesting. So not only uh, are you doing, so you've got your chiropractic practice, you have your, uh, your sports performance gym, but also you're on the uh, medical support staff for USAV Beach Volleyball and USA Weightlifting. And I know that you're expecting your first child. So what in the world, what do you do in all your spare time, Carla? <laughs> I don't really know what that is, Darren. <laughs> Well, I guess I'd really like to find out more about how you became affiliated with, uh, with the USAV Beach Volleyball and USA Weightlifting. For sure. So we had a unique opportunity where I was in grad school in California to work 
tons of sporting events. And I was on our sports council as an event coordinator and then as a vice president. So I got to set up all of these sporting events all over, whether it be a rowing regatta, mountain biking, beach volleyball, a marathon, whatever. So we would um, work with all the athletes at the events to, we were anything from main medical tent to just musculoskeletal injuries. So we got a wide variety of experiences with many sports, trauma, not trauma, like you name it. Um, on a national level, I was asked to apply for the USA uh, track and field Olympic trials. And as a young duck, and they only take a couple. And so I applied and I got in and I was super excited. And there's something called travel to treat laws in chiropractic. And the person who was organizing it thought I had an Iowa license and they were in Iowa that year, but I did not have an Iowa license. I had a Minnesota license. So unfortunately I got a phone call saying I couldn't work it because they didn't realize that I wasn't licensed there. Um, so after I was bummed, I talked with a mentor and he said, well, I have an ADP beach volleyball tournament down in Florida. There's open travel to treat. So do you want to come down and help me out? And so I said, yeah, I'll be there. And so I started with the ADP, which is the Association of Volleyball Professionals, which is a national organization in the United States. And through the years of that, I went on to being event coordinators for that and kind of wound my way into the national or international level when I would just work on athletes doing what I do. And some of them that were Olympians asked for me to come jump on board with their kind of main staff and travel with them internationally. And I know they, they appreciate having both male and female providers and having a female provider that is willing to travel internationally six to 12 weeks out of the year is, is tough. And so I fit that criteria and uh, I've been doing that for the last 11 years actually. And uh, USA Weightlifting kind of fell into place after that. I haven't spent nearly as much time with them. I've enjoyed my time with them. But I'd say uh, my heart and soul rest with the beach volleyball just because I feel like I've grown up with them. <laughs> well, I can't even imagine the stories that you could share about, uh, about beach volleyball. And, and, I, and I watch it because it's so entertaining. But I don't understand how anybody can have that much stamina. And it's some of those matches go on and on and on. and. I've tried beach volleyball about uh, about 35 seconds is about the extent of my uh, my my exertion level. And it, so these 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 athletes have to be so incredibly conditioned. Um, so I, uh, kudos to you for that. Um, Carla, one of the things that I did want to touch base with you on and when we when we visited, you you really pointed out that you're a very curious person by nature um, and that you always want to be learning. And uh, you said that you've actually recently kind of jumped into some, uh, some new um, training techniques and some new uh, treatment techniques. And I was hoping that you maybe you could, uh, could share that with our viewers today. Yeah. So I've always been curious about learning and I think I would be a full-time student all the time if I got paid to do that and I didn't have to take out so many loans. I love to just know what the next research is and the human body is changing. Like, not that the human body is changing, the knowledge of what we have with the human body is changing all the time. And that's why they call it a practice, um, whether it's medical, chiropractic, because once we think we know something, if you're set on that that is the way, it's already probably been that research is probably old and there's probably new research. So one of the reasons I really like working with professional athletes uh, isn't the fame. I don't really have any fame for uh, beach volleyball. It's, it's known to be every four years, I guess. But those athletes really challenge me to learn and grow and be better in what I do. And I think it's because they're so in tune with their bodies. They're like this very well-oiled machine and they can tell me exactly at what point during their arm swing or at what point, you know, when they're reaching for a ball that their knee like is bugging them and they, they can tweak it down and I have to be so accurate and so precise. And so I think 
they have challenged me in a really good way, which is why I think I love doing that, um, to learn and grow and figure things out on a different level. And then I can take that back to my practice here and I just help my patients so much more because I've been challenged in those ways. So I recently became a chiropractic acupuncturist, which means I can approach um, a patient and I can treat from Eastern or Western medical standpoint. So yes, they can do dry needling and all of those things that um, also come with the acupuncture. Uh, as far as um, I treat more pain, musculoskeletal injuries with the acupuncture. Acupuncture is a very, very broad world, and there are many things I don't treat with acupuncture, but that's one of the most recent things. Uh, it it kind of blows my mind that I'm able to use four needles in 15 minutes and accomplish what it used to take me an hour to do with my hands. So trying to find ways to better suit patients for what they need is always high on my list of how can I better help serve people. And, and there will be times I'll go through a certification or I'll go through some learning and I'll think back to a patient and I will literally send them a message saying, hey, I just learned something. I didn't know it when I saw you X amount of months ago. Um, and I'll have oftentimes patients will come back in because they're curious about um, what I have learned and how it can be applied to their particular case. Carla, I know that you are, uh, you know, you are also an athlete, and I was curious if um, if being an athlete is a benefit to you when you're treating, well, not only professional athletes but uh, your, your general uh, your general clientele. I might be biased, but I think so. I definitely am one of the proponents of if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. And I'm not saying that every person that treats a professional athlete needs to be a professional athlete. Um, however, I did do a research, a preliminary research study two summers ago uh, that was about how emotional intelligence plays a role uh, in providers' um, outcomes with professional versus non-professional athletes. And I found out a lot of really unique things. And I'm going to need somebody else to help me get that thing published. However, I did find out that from athletes in general, not just pro athletes, but anybody that participates in sports, if your provider is taking care of themselves and they're also eating the right things and they're also doing exercise, it might not be at the same level that the professional athletes are, they actually are much more in tune to trust you. And that to me plays a huge factor in patient outcomes. So for me, being able to be active and live a healthy lifestyle is huge. Um, not to mention, I've also gone through a lot of personal injuries. So I've had a lot of personal experience from these things, which I think helps me to relate and communicate with athletes who are going through injuries, whether that be from a physical standpoint, also an emotional standpoint, and then being able to work with them, especially like say they're a high school athlete, like how do I, how do I stay with my team and how do I mentally stay in it if I know I can't compete for the next month or two? And so I think a lot of those experiences have helped me work with that population a little bit better. You know, Carla, it was, it's interesting because uh, when we were visiting, um, you talked about that people refer constantly to you um, anybody that they have trouble with with shoulders so you're I don't know if you would call you the shoulder expert or the shoulder whisperer things like that um, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious it, it, is it your involvement with uh, with professional athletes or how did how in the world did you ever become the shoulder whisperer well I would say shoulders always intrigue me because they're a very it's the most unstable joint in the body that is connected indirectly with one of the most stable parts of our body. And so when I started working with beach volleyball, I was challenged immediately to know a lot about shoulders. And I did not know a lot immediately. So I went and I learned. And anybody that I could learn anything from for different shoulder injuries, different diagnostic skills, um, you know, when you're on the road, you don't have an MRI like instantly. So you have to figure out what is exactly going on and how exactly to treat it 
with your knowledge and your brain and your hands. So I was challenged right away and I've just ever since then the past 12 years, I think I've just been really interested in knowing more intricately about how the shoulder functions with the, the scapula or the shoulder blade and the thoracic spine or the upper back with the rib cage. How does it function with the diaphragm and the breathing and the cervical spine? So depending upon what sport people are playing or what people are doing, it's very complex. And a lot of people think like my shoulder is like my shoulder right here, but we might find that something in your upper back might be what's leading into your anterior shoulder pain. And so I really like to try and find out mechanically where is this coming from and how do we fix that underlying mechanical cause? Like I know your pain's here and we have to address that, but like what is causing it? And then we have to go in and fix that. And so I think that's why I'm just, I just am super curious about shoulders and I keep learning everything I can about them and people just keep coming in for shoulder stuff. So I'm happy to help them. And I found a lot of people have maybe been to a different therapist. And I think what we talked about in the beginning too, is they started their rehab and they, they started off really good. But for that per particular individual, they maybe got them through what they call like their activities of daily living. Like I can live without pain, but now I want to go back to my sport or my activity and my rehab didn't, it didn't get me where I needed to go. And so you have to progress and overload rehab just like you would a physical training regimen, like for weightlifting or cardiovascular endurance or whatever you're training for. You also have to treat your rehab like that. And I, I think maybe a lot of other providers don't take them quite where they need to go. And it's not because they're not good providers. It's a lot of times due to insurance and insurance barriers and insurance says you can only go so far, um, which is something that's different for me in my clinic as I don't submit directly through insurance in that, in that way. So we can bring people to that level where they need or they want to be. Mm -hmm. Well, Carla, you know, I, I, I find it so interesting. You've been, uh, you, you've been a great supporter of our chamber. We, we love hearing your story at, at, at our events, but I just wanted this as an opportunity for, for us to, to really tell your story a little bit to maybe some people who haven't heard about you. I think it's, it's just wonderful that, uh, that, that in Moorhead, we have, uh, we have somebody who's on the uh, medical support staff for Olympic beach volleyball, as well as the professional volleyball. Um, and it's, and it's fascinating hearing you speak about your work it, you can, you can just, you can, you can, you can sense the passion that you have for it. So, uh, so, so Carla, on behalf of the Fargo Moorhead West Fargo Chamber of Commerce, and especially the city of Moorhead, we're so thankful that we, that you've chosen to have your practice and your, and your gym here in our community. And, uh, and, and we could not ask for a better, uh, representative of our community around the world. So Carla, thank you so much and continued good luck. And, uh, can't wait to meet your baby. I bet you can't either. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're excited for him. Great. Wonderful. Well, great. Carla, thanks again. And I'll look forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks, Darren.